Oh, good morning. I hope you are up with a very grateful heart today. So let's conclude our five one of surgery 2014 basis. Here we have question 39 a patient with umbilical sepsis. Umbilical sepsis. And as a result of that, we have uh, the doctor noticed a edema of the right shoulder in this 26 day old child. Edema of the right shoulder. So if you read further, you see other signs of uh, sepsis 38.8 and so on. But what's um what's the major diagnosis here what's the what are we after in this case based on the edema of the right shoulder and uh, an underlying sepsis in this side if you look through all this option this infection will probably result in osteomyelitis and that is uh, epiphyseal osteomyelitis of the ovaries not any of this a 65 year old patient complains of dull pain in the rectum. During and after defecation, you will see blood administered with mucus and feces. And please notice the age. And then, patient has lost some weight. So, your best preliminary diagnosis, in, uh, together with results of digital examination, like a round constriction of the rectum with infiltrate at the base, this is uh, cancer of medium ampulla section of rectum. Where to be a selective colitis and Crohn's patient will have experienced it also much more earlier, but based on this result and weight loss in this patient is cancer of ampulla section rectum. All right, a 52 year old man fell from a three meter height, and now there's microhematuria, but the kidney functions, um, the kidney function properties are actually satisfactory. What is the most probable? Uh, diagnosis so the, our most probable diagnosis here is since the kidney function is satisfactory it's going to be a renal condition renal condition if it is uh, in kidney absorption it's going to affect uh, renal function multiple kidney eruption of course same here paranephrine hematoma most commonly it could be the, in some very in very severe form of trauma or in patients with uh, benign or malignant renal tumors. So the best answer here with hematuria and uh, satisfied kidney function is kidney condition. After some time the patient will actually get better itself, himself rather. And if you look at this uh, female patient and this is by from the right subcostal uh, area and together after that the patient had an ultrasound. So you can see apoechoic formations. Maybe you are thinking of cyst right now, five centimeter in diameter, another two up to one point five cent oh, centimeter in diameter. What's of information about three centimeter thick? So what's the most likely uh, diagnosis in this kind of patient? So this is like um already from the result of ultrasound, like hydatid liver disease, like hydatid liver disease. Temperature thirty seven point six. So this is echinococcus. That's what is going to cause cysts. Formation of cysts in the liver, and that is alveolar echinococcus of liver. The six-year-old uh, woman applied with to the doctor with complaints of enlargement of the right mammary gland. You see, nipple with alveolar is pasty and hydropic. Like again, it's one of those questions that we shouldn't think too far. When well, they're telling us about lemon peel, I'm sure by now we are thinking of probably a cancerous process. Uh, since we have a preceding description of atropic and pasty areola, and we are thinking of cancer, so what's our most probable diagnosis? They've simplified the atropic and infiltrative cancer of the mammary gland. This could manifest like Paget's cancer, but based on the description in the question, we we'll go for that option. Okay, when we have a patient with chronic uh, calculus cholecystitis. And as further complications right now, we are having stenosis uh, papillitis. In any time you're having uh, stenosis along the uh, sphincter ridge, one of the things you do is a sphincterotomy. It's a sphincterotomy. And in this particular, uh, the question is what is the best way of treatment? So it's, it's to do an endoscopic uh, papillosynthrotomy, endoscopic, endoscopic papillosynthrotomy. All right. 
This is a patient in need of uh, preoperative infusion therapy. You are going to see this in different questions, but anytime you have infusion of fluid, yeah, and what I notice about clock is they've been repeating the three letters almost every time. So uh, when you have such infusion as this amount and you are uh, giving such infusion into the same vein, that patient is at risk of uh, uh, acute uh, thrombophlebitis due to infusion. So it's, it's just a condition of acute thrombophlebitis. It's caused by infusion of large amount of fluid into a vein. All right. You know, from, from anatomy, when a patient falls with the hand arm stressed, the first bone that you have to uh, consider as being a victim in that patient is the clavicle. Is the clavicle. So this is a patient who fell acute pain on shoulder. Ten minutes earlier, he fell in the streets with his arms stretched. With his arms stretched. You might want to try this. Just try falling with your arms stretched. Oh, stop. So that you will not actually um, dislocate your clavicle. A 62-year-old patient has been delivered to the surgical department with complaints of sudden pain in the umbilical region, irradiating to the back. So we have pain in the umbilical region, irradiating to the back, and syncope. See, when you have combination of irradiating pain to the back together with syncope, you start thinking of, and you see, still your patient, start thinking of the abdominal aorta, abdominal aorta. So irrespective of the other things, by sounds like diminished arterial blood pressure is present, is present, arterial blood pressure drop is present and so on. So the most likely diagnosis in this kind of patient is is rupture of abdominal aortic aneurysm. The rupture is going to be differentiated from the actual aortic uh, abdominal aortic aneurysm because the arterial blood pressure is is dropping. Um, it's dropping. You see it's dropping rapidly in a patient that have had the aneurysm ruptured. All right, we know that uh, crypt, uh, crypt orchidism is a failure of the descent of the testes. And in this particular patient, they are telling that there is hypoplasia, a two year old a boy, hypoplasia of the right half of scrotum was revealed. See, absence of testicle. So, what is the most probable diagnosis? We know that this is cryptogrizing and the antennas is right side, so it's right, right. Why do we know which form? So, you, it's, it was palpated along the inguinal canal, along the inguinal canal. So, this is right sided cryptochidism, uh, inguinal form. And for those that are confused with the agenda, only men that God has made can actually have <laughs> such conditions, not. Uh, those who are men and think that they are women also. So right side acute optimism. 62 year old patient complains of pain behind the sternum, behind the sternum. At bad passing of solid and liquid fluid, 62 years old, increased salivation. Loss of weight, 15 kg over a period of uh, two months. I'm sure you are thinking of, you see, uh, Grigasin reaction is uh, positive. And take note of that uh, as well. What pathology caused the given clinical condition? With such weight loss and symptoms manifesting affection of the esophagus, this is esophageal cancer. We've differentiated it from Achalasia and some other things, previous uh, questions. A patient suffers from suddenly arising cramping pain, cramping pain in the right loin area. Two hours after the pain has started, Immateria took place. No pathological shadows. This is actually important in this question. Uh, pylocalysis, pylocaliectasis. There's enlargement of the uh, renal pelvis on the right. So, what is the most probable diagnosis? You see, with the fact that there is no pathological shadows and we have immateria and enlargement of the uh, uh, pylocalis, the the best answer in this uh, case is going to be stone of right kidney. The, this is a patient with renal colic, ren cramping pain. But, uh, that's like, uh, when you do that, you discover that Patanowski symptom is going to be positive. And you differentiate it from tumor of the renal pelvis, in which there are going to be presence of pathological shadows. All right, we have a patient 
extreme intense pain in the epigastrium. See, peptic order is this for peptic order this of duodenum for 10 years. And there are signs of peritonitis in this patient. So, what's the diagnosis? This ulcer is perforating. This ulcer is perforating. Perforation of ulcer. 30 year old patient complains of pain, aparemia along subcutaneous veins. While examining the large subcutaneous vein, there's aparemia and so on. What is pimline diagnosis? Already they are telling that Oman's and Lee signs are negative. Oman's sign is, is, is present in our different uh, thrombosis. So, but here they are negative and they are telling us about aparemia along subcutaneous veins and so on. So, what's the pimline diagnosis? This is acute tonfopleuritis of subcutaneous vein, as simple as uh, is outlined for us in the question. They are just telling us put these things in the medical term. 30 year old man has suffered from traffic accidents. Consciousness is absent. Pulse on the carotid artery is undetermined. No respiration. There's wide leather belt on the man's waist. What measures are to be taken? They are just trying to give us a little critical technique question that if you want to save the life of a patient, how do you go about saving it? The first thing is to remove this uh, the belt first of all. So that's what they told us about. So conduct an artificial. Ventilation of lungs and close your stroma after having relieved from the bed. Alright, 83 year old patient and there's positive straight leg raising after falling on the right side of our body. An objective examination our right leg is rotated outwards and so on. But what is going to put our attention more to this in this case is. It, it's a three-year-old patient that is old patient falling on the right side. It's going to actually have fracture of the most uh, private place to have fracture in the femur. And there's positive straight leg uh, raising sign. That is a fracture of the femoral neck. Like very common to have fractures. There's actually in a three-year-old patient who is already prone to having osteoporosis. Their bone density is not like hers. Alright, 50 year old patient complains of bursting pain in the left lower limb that is getting worse on exertion, swelling in the region of shin and foot, uh, the left shin and foot, the skin of lower skin or chin is indurated, subcutaneous veins are dilated. I'm showing sure right now the vipers to narrow it down to veins. So, yeah, nothing is not this, it's not this, it's not this. So we just we are left with different thrombosis of lower limbs and post thrombophlebitic uh, syndrome. So some of these signs that they are giving us manifesting in the subcutaneous veins and so on is due to thrombophlebitis. And so this is a patient uh, post thrombophlebitic uh, syndrome. Three days ago, by reading through the question and digital investigation of rectum revealed pathology that is painful infiltration reaching the pectinate line, what is the most likely diagnosis? Which of these uh, options in line together with fever? In line together with fever. So, yeah, in line, so you are not longer thinking of hemorrhoid and official and all this. So, this is a patient with acute periprotactis. 65 year old patients worsening of left eye vision in triangular pressure is 18. In some instances, they will tell you that the IOP is from 12 to uh, 22 mmHg. And the eye is quite, people of eye is gray. See, the patient that is 65 years old. This is, uh, these are signs of uh, cataracts. Reflex on eye background is absent. These are signs of, and senna is like. Old patient, cataract has a lot of age in this patient. His glaucoma will be seen pressures and so on. Alright, we have the six year old patient admitted to us with sharp pain in substandard area following occasional swallowing of fish bone. If we reach you, we have dysphagia, and so what complication has developed? You know, in fish bone it can actually like perforate the esophagus, and patient will develop. Uh, mediastinitis. So this perfection of osophagus, perfection of osophagus, as out of this uh, foreign body. Alright, this is a patient with hemophilia B. 
what antimophilic medication should be prescribed in the pre and post operative treatment plan when this patient is have high risk of bleeding. I know that we've seen several questions like this, so we just have to differentiate between two answers cryo precipitate and fresh frozen plasma. You will notice that many times you don't find the two in the same option. If it is hemophilia A, for example, they will not give us cryo precipitate and fresh frozen plasma in the option because both of those two preparations contain uh, antimophilic factor A. But hemophilia B, antimophilic factor B, can only be found in fresh frozen plasma. Is not found in cryo precipitates, so that's one of the basic difference between cryo precipitate and fresh frozen plasma. Cryo precipitate does not contain antimophilic factor B. Does not. It contains A but not B. All right, let's just go for the clear straight away in this question. They are giving you about a patient with respiratory disorder that is producing blood spec sputum, mucor sputum. Yeah, many things can cause that. You can have it in cancer. You can have it in maybe in abscess. You can have it in in uh, in primer and so on. But here yeah, they are telling us that see there is moist rails of different types at lower lobe and amphoric breath near the angle of scapula. Anytime you see amphoric sound in the respiratory pathology, amphoric sound is actually produced when there is presence of a cavity in the thorax, when there is presence of a cavity in the lungs. And which of these processes are we talking about uh, cavity as a sort of infectious process right now? It's an abscess. An abscess. When you notice a freak breath, think of an abscess. 24-year-old male patient was transferred to the shell surgery department from general surgical department with acute post-traumatic empyema of pleura on x-ray wide level fluid horizontal wide level horizontal fluid level on the right what treatment use this empyema like you have pus in the pleural cavity you want to do a puncture and uh, drain that's, that's just what you do and then maybe to get like antibiotics and so on all right, this is a case a uh, patient is already having difficulty in swallowing with such high temperature and uh, submaxillary glands on the right are painful and enlarged. And what's the cause of you see we have intense pressing pain in the pharynx. So what is the most probable diagnosis? Most probable diagnosis. Since that, since the patient is having impossible to even swallow up to liquid fluid, it is not diphtheria. If it is diphtheria, they will be telling us about uh, uh, the the my, the patches difficult to remove and so on. Vincent's uh, disease is a is a form of necrotizing gingivitis, majorly affecting the teeth. That's not what we are talking about. This is not a case of phlegmatic like, tonsillitis. It will not be so. It can be a lab, but not as causing swelling, difficulty in swelling of even uh, liquid fluid. So the correct answer is a peritonsillar abscess. It's not the tumor look at the temperature and so on. So is it, this is a peritonsillar abscess. When you see such questions and patients find it difficult to swallow. All right, this is the abdomen of a 65-year-old female patient, one 13 by 8 centimeter in the oblique and above perfected. Removable person. On auscultation, we have systolic murmur. What is the most probable diagnosis? Why can you have such a mass in the abdominal region and yet you have a systolic moment? That's an aortic aneurysm, but not rupture. They will have told us about blood pressure, drop, and everything. So this is abdominal aortic aneurysm. It's usually due to uh, primary uh, elastosis. All right, an hour before uh, an elective surgery, a 56 year old patient of the surgical department got a dramatic increase in blood pressure together with all these other signs. Yet, this patient we have to carry out this elective surgery. Then, the patient refuses to what tactics should be chosen by the surgeon if we normalize the blood pressure, every other thing, and these signs of anxiety, and everything we actually calm down the patient and then you can proceed with the surgery. So, start the surgery after correction of blood pressure. The patient with suspicion of pelvic bone fracture is under examination conducted by a doctor 
who presses the ally in medial direction with his two ends with two ends so what is cause what causes the painful syndrome in this um, patient mm, okay let's look at what is is it not first of all this like in the medial direction this uh this is not really about the intrapelvic organs this is about the bone itself so it's not with your peritoneal hematoma and so we are left with fracture of sacrum fracture of sciatic bones and traumatic uh, and disorder of continuity of the pelvic ring and according to this case this question this fits best disorder of continuity of pelvic ring if you are trying to give a blind infusion for the saving of the life of a patient, the safest thing to use is a saline solution. 0.9% saline solution. See, you are seeing a patient with who have been a smoker, having intermittent claudication, pains on walking and so on. You see. Pedal pulse cannot be palpable. Femoral pulse is preserved. What is the most likely diagnosis? This is not renal disease. It's, you see the other signs of uh, scleroderma, deep um, thrombophlebitis. Here we are talking about arteries, diabetic angiopathy, no history of diabetes. Lewis syndrome is uh, aortofemoral insufficiency occlusion. Aortofemoral occlusion at the level of bifurcation of the of the abdominal aorta that you know, you're going to have some occlusion and then we will have the femoral pulse to be absent so we have femoral pulse being preserved there. so the best answer in this case is obliterating and arthritis okay thank you so much for telling us that she had uh, uh, several casual sexual contacts with, uh, with this manifestation of weight loss and leukocytopenia. So what disease are you suspecting which of these diseases are sexually transmitted? HIV infection. Alright. They are asking us which group of muscles are more responsible for musculovenous pump, that is for venous return to the heart. And so irrespective of the fact that they are telling us that this is chronic venous sufficiency. So which group of muscles? This shin muscles. Shin muscles. Shin muscles. Okay, what actions from the given below are decisive ones to prevent anaerobic or uh, infection in a patient that had uh, a crash wound two hours ago, and during the surgical treatment they found dirty clothes and gravel being removed in the uh, in the right shin. So what do you do for anaerobic infection? Actually, I know that one of the things they do is to do an hyperbaric oxygenation. But in this uh, patient, I, maybe because of the limited area or so, the, they told that the best answer here is to, is to do a radical surgical treatment. A radical surgical treatment. So. Again, a patient is having liver, echinococcus, echino and you know that this is cause like uh, liver cysts and you can easily pick up that on an abdominal ultrasound on the liver ultrasound so you're yes, sorry all right you have a group of persons in which you already know the cause of their death in a mug if you want to determine the blood group of a patient it's better off of this dead body rather it's better to determine for that uh for the person whose cause of death is unknown so all dead bodies of the unknown persons all right we have 50 year old patients complaints of blood in urine no other symptoms just immaterial you know we've said it before when it, there's no other symptom this is a 50 year old patient just immaterial and uh, when i when rectal examination with the periphysical gland is not large and so on. what disease do you think in the first place in the first place, do you think you are thinking of cancer of the kidney? Cancer of the kidney, just in Nigeria. For those who saw Dr. House, he described that uh, Cody had that symptom, just uh, in Nigeria. A patient complains of nicturia, constant boring pain in perineum and superbibic region. 
weak urine, jet, and and so on. So if you are telling us about these things that the result of uh, prostate enlargement, what disease can it be? You probably want to think of uh, prostatic hyperplasia or cancer of the prostate, even if possible, maybe uh, stone in the kidney, but it will be mobile. And in this condition, that we have a dense asymmetric central circles flattened. The right lobe is dense, painless, and tuberous. This is condition of uh, prostate cancer. Prostate cancer. All right. When they are telling us about uh, painful swelling, the shin region, examination reveals an acutely inflamed cone-shaped dense node. Skin over it is red. I'm just trying to put attention to one word. In the center of the node, that is, they could bring boil it down to just one, to just one. There is an ulcer with overhanging edges and a negative core of dirty green color, you know, in the shin region. So probably you are thinking of a furuncle. You know, furuncle and carbuncle is the amount of air follicles that are being affected. In furuncle it is one, in carbuncle it is many. And sometimes you could confuse them, you see. Carbuncle, car. There are so many cars on the road. So we are talking simply of furuncle here. In the center of the node there is an ulcer. You know, that is just one located. All right. Uh, reading through this question, they are asking us when they start the most important question, the most important clue in this question is the presence of a gas precipitation. Gas crepitation of the on the objective examination is typical, is typical, is typical for uh, anaerobic clostridia infection. And aerobic procedure will please just take note of that. You could also have crepitation in condition of uh, tendous uh, synovitis. Think about you know, tendo uh, vaginitis is possible. Tendo synovitis is possible to have it there, but it's not in this option. This is our last question. Wish you a uh, happy reading. I'm sure many of us are about to end our classes now, so it's a time to take some time back. And be so grateful to God to appreciate him for all that he has done. The child presented to the surgical repayment admitted. Uh, this child, one month old boy, was admitted. Diagnosed with left sided uh, pile ectasis enlargement. Patient is having initial adrenophrosis. As at this level, it may not even go beyond one centimeter below the rib cage, but it's already patient is having adrenophrosis. There's no information confirming secondary pyelonephritis, so there's no infectious complication of any form. What tactics of the patient management in a one-month-old boy? One thing is that let us still observe. Let's still observe, and that is a six-month surveillance. You can tell us that the secondary pyelonephritis, you have definitely have need of treatment. Have a beautiful day. Uh, fight two. We we'll start with fight two. Later. God bless you.